Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ. We are getting ready for uh, what some of us would argue is the best weekend in football. The divisional round of the playoffs, they are now set Saturday. Uh, two teams we have yet to see with the first round by and the wild card round. You get the Texans at the Ravens. By the way, it will be windy. It will be cold. You're welcome. What network is that uh, Bill's Chiefs game on, Pete? CBS. CBS. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think we should send you to Buffalo. Like, CBS. you escaped no. all of... The bad weather this weekend. Not, me and Brady were nice and toasty in here on Sunday. It was actually a little too warm. Monday. It was. Yeah, we're, we're being Patrick honest. Mahomes. First playoff game on the road. I saw them already this year. I saw the two of them play this year in Kansas City. It was cold <laughs> enough for me that day. It was 50 degrees. It was in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the Dolphins when it comes to the weather. Okay, let's start with the Ravens uh, back in action after the bye week. Um, th this is a game that we saw week one, but that was C.J. Stroud's very first game. They host the Texans, and Brady's got those Texans ranked number six in the playoffs. I, I would say, you know, for both of the one seeds, I know we're talking about Baltimore specifically, mm -hmm. but both Baltimore and San Francisco, they are facing two of the hottest teams, two of the up-and-coming stars at quarterback heading into this playoff. They have all this momentum. Uh, they don't know what they don't know. Now, I granted, you know, C.J. Stroud's played this team before in Baltimore, so that's going to help him in his preparation for this game. But even in talking about Jordan Love versus San Francisco 49ers, is this is their first experience, you know, being in the playoffs and dealing with the hype and everything else that comes along with it. And so far, they've exceeded with flying colors. So I think this is a much bigger challenge um, for both these one seeds than maybe we're leading on because the line looks gigantic in both these games. I think it all depends on how the start of these games go. If C.J. Stroud and the Texans come out hot and aggressive like they have been, I think they can hang around versus Baltimore. You know, it, it's tough for both those one seeds sitting there and then you get hot teams. I've, we've seen this before play out over and over. Now, it hasn't recently, but over and over in the history of this league, and, and we've seen these teams get hot and go on a run and upset the team that's been sitting there. So it is concerning for the Ravens. It's concerning for the 49ers because they were particularly the Ravens were rolling as they went to their, uh, you know, off week. And, and yeah. Lamar Jackson hasn't played in, what, three weeks now? Because he didn't play in the at the end of the season. So I, I'm concerned for what we'll see from these teams. They're so good and so talented, though. You would think that the, even if they're threatened early in the game that they might pull away late. Yeah, I think the other thing for Lamar Jackson specifically is, you know, you're at this point in time in the season where Todd Munkin comes in. They're obviously working more on him playing from the pocket, more of the passing game, incorporating Zay Flowers has been phenomenal, replacing Mark Andrews after the injury. You know, Isaiah likely has done a good job of that. And the rest of the receivers, you know, OBJ and Babe and everyone else, Agu Aguilar, they've all kind of pitched in and they played a role this year. Now you're in the playoffs, though. This is where you start to let Lamar loose as a runner, too. Maybe some more quarterback design runs, some more reads in there as well, or if things aren't there, he takes off and runs. That's where I think they can be so dangerous is with where this passing game is, but also with his ability to hurt you with his legs on those passing plays. He eliminates any ability for teams to play man-to-man -man against them, in part because their personnel now and how they match up, but also, I think, because of his speed. And once those guys turn their backs, he is gone. Like, we watched Josh Allen do it in, in – you know, this past weekend's games, Lamar Jackson's on a different level than that running the football. And so it almost eliminates the ability to match up like that. Ravens have won just two playoff games in the past test seasons. We'll see if they can get it done this weekend. All right, the other game we're going to talk about on Saturday, 49ers versus the Packers here. Big line in this one, 49ers favored by about 10. These teams very familiar with one another in the postseason. They've met 10 times, or this will be their 10th meeting so far. Uh, Pete, I want to start with you, though, because you called the Packers one of the hottest teams in the playoffs. Could you imagine if Jordan Love beats the 49ers and Aaron Rodgers in the postseason? Aaron Rodgers was 0-3 against them <laughs> in the postseason. That would be incredible. I, I just love what the way they're playing on offense. It's almost almost like we talked about it in November. All the kids have grown up together and they're playing loose, free, and they have nothing to lose. And they played like it. They played so well the other day on the offensive side of the ball. The hidden thing that people aren't talking about enough about is the improvement of the offensive line. Those guys have, A, they blocked well in the run game the other day, but they've also been outstanding in pass protection. If you, what do we say about the 49ers, Brady? If you can block them, you, you can, can beat them. them. <laughs> and I think that's the key to the game. Can Tom and Walker, can they hold up against the edge rushers of Young and Bosa? That will be the number one priority for the Green Bay Packers. I wonder how much schematically, too, though, Kyle Shanahan has over Matt LaFleur. When it comes down to that tree, that coaching tree, and we, we know all about the Shanahan and McVay and LaFleur and everyone else who 
she's played a part of kind of that tree now. And it's been phenomenal as far as offensive prowess in the NFL. But you wonder, too, how much that is, is holding over Matt LaFleur's head and whether or not they can figure out ways of scheming up uh, their offense to find more ways of getting points. Because I'm sure Kyle Shanahan's sitting in that defensive coordinator with Steve Wilkes, and he's saying to him, like, hey, if they're in this, here's what they're doing. Here's just Tennessee. Here's what he likes to do here. They know so much about one another. So the X's and O's of this one is one I'm really curious to see. Um, but also, to your point, again, the rust. I mean, we haven't seen the 49ers for some of those players play in a few weeks. How does that impact them coming into this one? Do they get off to a fast start? But I talked about it before. The, the run defense of Green Bay is my biggest concern. Can they, start, can they stop Christian McCaffrey? If they can't, it could be a field day. And I don't think the Packers want this going to attract me. And I know Jordan Love's been phenomenal. But I think if that team becomes one-dimensional, that's a problem with those pass rushers. I don't care how good that offensive line Green Bay has played. To stop those guys for four quarters is tough. Yeah, you know, they don't want to track me. I mean, they, they don't mind it being in the high 20s, but they don't want it in the, in the high 30s for sure. What would be a bigger upset between these two games? For me, it would be the Texans. I, 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 yeah, the Texas, yeah, the Texas beating Baltimore would be the bigger one. I mean, that's the number one seed right now. We watched Baltimore go to San Francisco and, and crush them. So the Texans with a first-year head coach, a rookie starting quarterback to go into Baltimore and win that one, yeah. But again, I, the way, the way C.J. Stroud's playing this year, I would not put anything off the table so far. We've seen a lot of upstarts do this over the years where you say, oh, I, don't, I don't see it happening, and they go do it. I well, mean, you, said, yes, you said last week you, you, there's going to be some chaos in the playoffs. Uh, and I think it's coming. I think there will be somebody's going down this mm. week. One Somebody, of the one seeds? One of the one seeds is going oh, down this week. Oh, wow. I mean, these are almost double-digit Because mm -hmm. on, paper, on paper, you look at it and you say, Boy, the 49ers and the Ravens, they have, this, particularly the 49ers, it's worked out perfectly for them, right? Yeah. I mean, where's the real, when you look at it, if you really say it, where's the real threat to the 49ers in the NFC? I mean, I would say themselves. <laughs> right. And, and so, but I still think, I've seen, hey, I saw a Jacksonville team in 1996 that was second year of existence go to Denver as 15-point underdogs and beat the Broncos, who, by the way, went on and won back-to-back -back Super Bowls after that. They had no business. I mean, they dominated them in the game, but that, that was a huge upset. It can ha The Giants, over the years, what they've done with, with Coughlin and Manning, they were underdogs. They were a wild-card team. The Ravens went out on the road as a wild-card team and won the Super yeah. Bowl. So it's hot team is dangerous in the postseason. All right, Pete thinks one of the one seeds is going to go down there. This week, but when we when we talk most intriguing matchup, th there's only one game where the spread is lower than six. That's the game we have on CBS. It's Bills. It's Chiefs. Can you go anywhere else but that game for the most intriguing matchup? No, I mean for Patrick Mahomes. At this point in time in his career, his illustrious career, this is his first road playoff game. Are you kidding me? How ridiculous <laughs> that is! I mean, the, play, the fact that it's in Buffalo versus Love a team it. they have a history with, and the way these two quarterbacks and everything else square off, uh, this to me is the game of the weekend. The one with the most storylines. I'm still trying to figure out which sweet Taylor Swift's going to be in, or if she's going to be pounding beers and eating wings at an anchor bar <laughs> at some point Hopefully. in Buffalo before the game. I, I don't know. That doesn't feel like her style. But <laughs> either way, this is the most tantalizing game because. It, it feels like it's in order to get to the Super Bowl, you have to go through Kansas City. And that's not the case now. You, don't, you have to go through, at least this week, Buffalo if Casey wants to get back to another AFC Championship game. And it's going to be a tall task the way Josh Allen's playing. What do the guys all do now? Inject it. Give me every bit of this game right here. All of it. All of it. <laughs> Is that I what they want do? All, all inject it all. Slapping their foot. No, I think they yeah, go like this. They go like this. Well, that, that's well, you that's gotta get it, ice you in their veins. You gotta that's get it, not what you're you saying. Get it, you gotta get it Give right. Give it to me. Oh, Give it, me that injection. It's injected. It's injected. Injected into my veins. Yeah, I think That's you're what it off is. here, Brady. Yeah, it's injected into my veins. All of it. Every bit of it. I can't wait for this. This is everything and anything I want in an NFL game. You have the two best quarterbacks or two, two of the three best quarterbacks in the NFL in this game and both are capable of putting up big numbers. The only concern I have right now, the only concern is that defensive ball. Banged up, yep. I mean, who are, they, who are they starting? Who are they starting a linebacker? That's the problem. Know. I don't know. Did you see A.J. Klein? <laughs> they're going to they're gonna have to check okay. something in someone's veins to get him back in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know all about that when you play. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you said this is everything you want in a postseason game. Uh, we asked you for a key matchup throughout the entire weekend, though. You're not going with this game, however you are. Yeah, yeah. it looks like it's Alan Mahomes. I didn't want to take the low-hanging fruit. Uh, yeah, you oh, call, oh, call it low-hanging fruit, but he's injecting it in his veins, apparently. Um, yeah, I mean, look, th this is going to be 
part of the legacy of both these quarterbacks. You know, how these two match up. Um, you can go through the years of the different quarterback robberies, and you're not facing each other necessarily. You're facing the defense across from you. But when you're talking about at the end of each one of their careers, a lot of Patrick Mahomes' legacy and Josh Allen's legacy will involve how they squirt off head-to-head -head versus one another. This is the closest thing in recent history, dare I say it, to Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Now, they don't have the, the Super Bowls yet. Patrick Mahomes does, Josh Allen doesn't, but this could be Josh Allen's year to finally win that Super Bowl with it, and we start talking about it that way. So call low-hanging fruit, Pete, but you are apparently injecting this game into your veins, and it's partly because of that quarterback matchup. Yeah, and I went to the to the Ravens game because I want to see what C.J. Stroud does against that Ravens defense. Okay. That's a comp. You you broke it down. You broke it down a couple different times. It's complicated. It is tough to deal with, and you know last week. Cleveland just sat back there and played coverage, and he just destroyed him. The Ravens won't do that. They will come after him in a variety of different ways, and it'll be tougher for him. I think the, the tougher thing is, is I don't know that you have as many mismatches, you know, where you can look for Ronnie Hickman at the safety position or Emerson, too, on the outside at corner, and that was really what the, the Houston Texans were able to do. And credit Bobby Slowick. The job he's done creating those mismatches, creating things off of the play action, the way they can run the football, but give the, the deception of running the football, much like the San Francisco 49ers, do in order to throw and take chunks downfield. That's what they're able to do. I don't know that they have that many mismatches in the Baltimore uh, Ravens secondary, so that's going to be the biggest challenge is if, if they can, if the Baltimore Ravens can match up coverage-wise, it, it could be a tough day for them to find those big chunk plays like they found all year. Texans and Packers are both about 10-point underdogs. The Buccaneers, almost 7-point underdogs at 6, 6.5. That's one. Closest spread is that Chiefs-Bills game, which is about two and a half. If you're to pick one underdog with the best chance of pulling an upset, who is it? Whew, I, I would actually say the Tampa Bay Bucks, And in part because, you know, I think when you look at, and you just talked about it though, Pete, the struggle of, of the Lions secondary, and, and if they can get any sort of passion. If they can't, I think Evans... Godwin, we saw David Moore step up. Palmer can play a factor. Kate Otten, too. All those guys can play a role in creating some big plays. And I also wonder this. Do you worry at all about a little bit of a letdown with the, all the storylines and everything else that went into their matchup versus the Rams last week? And then coming back again. I know it's going to be rocking there. I know they're excited in Detroit. But I do wonder about that particular game last week maybe playing a little bit of an impact. Not, not a letdown in any way. But just almost like it took so much, and it was such a tight, close game and a fun game. But does that play a factor in heading this week? Yeah, and, and by the way, I, I, I just eliminated the Chiefs are the obvious answer here because they're the one that could pull off the upset. But I, really, I mean, realistically, that's almost an even game if yeah, you I, basically mm -hmm. put it down as three points for the home field. I took the Bucks as well. And I do think they have a legitimate chance to go in there and win that game. I, I love the way the Bucks are playing. And what Todd Bowles did on defense to Jalen Hurts, he can do that uh, on the other side to, uh, to uh, you know, the Lions, to Jared Goff and the Lions offense. I am a little concerned about the pressure the Lions can put on Baker Mayfield. They were good last night. There were times, though, where the Eagles still got pressure, the offensive line. That's been, remember, the Saints got them a bunch. Yeah. If Hutchinson gets going and they start feeding off of that, maybe. But I think this is a tight game. I really do. I think it's a close game. It wouldn't surprise me to see them pull off the upset. Do you worry a little bit about all the motion and everything that went into last week's game in Detroit? Yes, I do. Because you're right. It, that was big for the city. It was big for everybody. And so there's, it's not a letdown because it's hard to say you're going to have a letdown in the postseason. It might be more of a letdown for the people in the crowd than it will be for the players. And so how does that manifest itself when you take the field? The thing is the Bucks defense is kind of back to full strength, too. And I think last night's game was almost like a foreshadowing of things to come when they stopped the, the brotherly shove, tush push, whatever you want to call it. It was like, oh, no, I feel like can't convert on that. There's going to be some problems here the Twice. second half of this well, game. Twice and young times. guys like Cancy and Diaby and guys like that, they're yeah. starting to play, you know, they're, they're rookies. They're playing faster. They're getting much better on defense. My only concern is that offensive line will hold up. All right, Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn here looking ahead to the divisional round, which begins on Saturday. You're ridiculous. What? It does. And then yeah. Two games on Saturday, two on Sunday. The the Sunday game, Peter. That's I, the one we've got. I still say we send Pete. I do I do think we should ship Pete out there. Yeah. Chiefs at Bills. You can watch it on CBS streaming on Paramount Plus.